scope fun S9 laser right there in front of me. I'm burning a layout grid on it right now. I've made some modifications, added a baseboard, a spoil board, a little mount for the uh, focus piece so I don't lose it. I'll show you what I did here coming up. It's getting a little smoky in here. I'm Roger welcome to the shop and yes I have the laser running and yes I have goggles but no I am not looking down there that laser has a shield on it and as long as I'm not looking down there and looking at it I am fine without the goggles on but what I've done here is I've done a few modifications of this I printed some uh, mounting feet for this and there'll be a link in the description if you have a 3d printer to uh, print these and if you don't have a 3d printer send me an email and I can make you a set for a modest cost. I don't do this to make a big profit or anything. I like to help fellow laser users. This particular feat, and I'll show you on a close-up here, actually raises the laser up a little bit, which would let you use a honeycomb board underneath it if you wish. And what I have done here was uh, I had a scrap of plywood that's actually from another laser project and I mounted the laser to that and then used a piece of half inch MDF which is removable into the center and I am currently burning a layout grid on it. So where did the layout grid come from? Well the layout grid is actually meant for an Artur Laser Master 2 and it's 400 millimeter square. Uh, the work area on this uh, Sculptfun S9 is 410 millimeter by 420 millimeter so I could have made a custom grid for this but since the 400 millimeter square grid for the orator was so close, why bother? I'll just use this one. Like I said, there'll be a link in the description where you can download that from Thingiverse. And this uh, grid was not created by me. It was cre created by Buster Beagle 3D. And it runs from Laser Gerbil. So you don't have to have Lightburn to do this. The G-code's right there. Although you could also run the G-code from Lightburn because I have done that on uh, some other projects as well. So let me get you in close and show you what some of these little bitty mods are. On the 3D printed feet, there are two different styles. One is for the motherboard corner, the other three are identical. And they mount like this. There's a screw that goes in here into your board and one over here. There is a little spot right here where you can put a set screw if you wish. To put a set screw into that, but these do fit quite snug. And I did have to remove the little rubber feet that uh, come with the laser to be able to put that in there. This holds it nice and secure and it is removable. I can take this off and take it somewhere and when I bring it back and put it back on here, it will be in exactly the same spot so the, the layout grid will be very accurate. Okay, this right here is the corner where the motherboard is and uh, the controller. So that particular mount is just a little bit different, but it still mounts with two screws. One down here, one over here, and there is a spot for a set screw if you would decide to use one. Okay, one of the uh, problems with any one of the lasers that has a separate focusing piece, whether it be a flat piece of acrylic or a little aluminum cylinder like we have here, is it's very, very easy to lose it. A couple of the models out there actually have little kickstands that drop down for focusing, and that's kind of a nice feature. I wish everybody would do it. So what I did here was this little piece here is just a 3D printed piece, and I will put a link in the description on where to download that from Thingiverse if you have a 3D printer. If you don't, you can contact me and I could whip you one of them up. And if you happen to have me make you the feet and that, it will be even less in cost because most of the cost always seems to be in postage. And here is a little shot on the laptop here of what the grid is and what it looks like. Hopefully there's not a big reflection from the overhead lighting in that, and you can kind of see. And if you uh, have never used laser gerbil before, you can actually follow the cursor and it'll show you where it's engraving. Give you a little shot of this as it's engraving. Of course, this laser does not have air assist, and the, uh, the board here that this is engraving on is MDF. And it was sanded first. It was sanded down to 220 to make it extremely smooth. And it does make a nice burn. It also makes a nice amount of smoke. But it is so cold out today, I don't want to have the shop door open. So I'm just kind of dealing with it. And every so often, I'll open the door and let a little bit of fresh air in. Uh, 
I guess I could have put the enclosure over this and then vented it out the window, but then you wouldn't be able to see what was going on. Okay, while this grid is burning, I want to reiterate a little bit about um, laser safety. You see I've got the goggles on because I've been watching this very close. Yes, it does have a shield on it. If you're just glancing at it, that's fine. But if you are going to look at that for any period of time, you need to have safety glasses on, or goggles in my case, because I have prescription glasses. You need something to fit over it. And the proper color for a blue diode laser is orange. I know a lot of the lasers come with either a dark green, a light green, a mid green, or a red glasses. That's better than nothing, believe me. But if you would even talk to an optometrist or if you would look this up online on the uh, wavelength of a blue diode laser, the proper color is orange because the opposite of orange is blue. I should say the opposite of blue is orange, or though the opposites work both ways. You definitely want to have safety glasses on. And again, do not operate one of these with children around or pets because either a child or a dog or a cat will want to stare at a laser beam and it will absolutely damage your eyes. So there's something to keep in mind and something you need to follow very closely. Keep, keep away from kids and pets. Another question I get is, you know, where do I get these goggles? I did get these on Amazon. They are made, as I said before, specifically for blue diode lasers. They are not cheap. These are like 80 bucks. But what, do you, what is your eyesight worth? So there's something else to keep in mind. I'll put a link in the description on what these are. They're, I'm not sponsored by them or anything. I did buy these because uh, protecting your eyes is extremely important. And yes, it's smoky in here. And yes, I should have some more ventilation, but because of the weather today, it was 60 yesterday, it's 20 today. And the wind is just howling out there. So I'm kind of putting up with the smoke. Occasionally I'll open the door there, let some out, let some fresh air in, but I need to keep some heat in here. Okay, so there's our completed grid. And I'm going to add a little bit of custom, customizing to this because of what I'm going to do with this laser. I'm actually going to be gifting this to a family member for Christmas fully assembled, fully calibrated, along with a uh, light burn license. So they'll, he'll be able to use this. So what I'm going to do now is put his name right there where the laser head is. That's going to be the center of where his name's going to be. So now I'm going to be laying that out in light burn. So what I'm doing here is actually engraving his name on the spoil board up here at the top. You'll still be able to use all the layout grid and everything, but it's a little bit of a personalized thing since this is going to be a gift for a family member. So, there we have a personalized spoil board. So, is this a good entry level laser for a beginner? Absolutely, and that's why I'm, I'm giving it to this particular family member. Never used a laser before, he has had a great interest in it. He's watched me use several of mine and he really wants to get started with it. He has absolutely no experience in using a laser or CNC or anything like that, or he has no idea what Cartesian uh, directions are. So, and if you don't know what Cartesian directions are, that is in the 3D world, that's your X, Y, and Z axis. Just a little trivia there for you. So, yes, it's an absolutely is good for a beginner entry level. And that's why I'm getting him started with this. It doesn't have all the fancy bells and whistles like some of the really high-end lasers do. And this is a good place to learn. So uh, start simple, start out easy. And from there, if you want to move up to a thousand, two, three thousand dollar laser, have at it. But there again, good entry level laser. I wanted to show some of the modifications I made of this sculpt on S9 because I'm going to be, again, giving it to a family member as a Christmas gift. And if he happens to watch this video before Christmas, he's going to know what he's getting because his name's on it. And he does watch my channel from time to time. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. There'll be links in the description on uh, both this laser and where to get these goggles if uh, you wear prescription glasses like I do. 
and needs something that's comfortable and fits over them. So there will be a li uh, link in the description for that as well. So I'm Roger in the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.